time for some Judah praise. And I know, guys, people say all the time, say, well, this ain't no Baptist church. I'm glad. Well, this ain't a Pentecostal church. I'm glad. We are a church of the living God. We believe what God wrote in the Bible is still ready available for you and I today. He hadn't died. He's still awake. He's still on the throne. He's still good. His gifts are still available. But God's church must come to life and accept what God is doing. we got to quit debating the Bible and start becoming and living the Bible. That's what we got to do. So today, if you have your Bible, Psalms chapter 76. We went there last week. I'm going to go back and set a foundation. And then you can also turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I got the big Bible behind me, so if you don't have your word, you can look at that. Okay, Psalms chapter 76. You got to get this word today. It's time for some Judah praise. Verse 1 of Psalm 76 says, In Judah, in what? Is God known? In Judah. Judah in the Hebrew means praise. So in praise, in worship, God is known. Now let, that, let that hang in your spirit. His name is great in Israel. Hallelujah. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Verse 3, here's what he says. Now, if you find Judah, if you find praise, he said right there is where he will break the arrows and the bow. Listen to me, that fiery darts that the enemy throws at you. Right there, if you find praise, God says, I'll break those arrows for, for, your, for, for me. Listen to this. He said also, you're the shield and the sword and the battle. God says, if you find Judah, if you find praise, right there, in the midst of the valley, in the midst of your hard times, right there is where I will break the, the enemy's bow. Now I'll turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me just for a moment. Because if I don't set this foundation, you're going to be lost. 1 Samuel 17. Starting in verse 1. It says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. Where were they going? To battle. Where do, where do Christians go? We battle. We battle. Watch this. They, they set their armies together for battle. And they were gathered together at Shachal, which belongeth to who? Who did it belong to? Judah. It belonged to praise. This valley where they were going, Scott, to do this battle, it belonged to Judah. It didn't belong to their stress. It didn't belong to anxiety, intimidation, fear, worry. It didn't belong to that. This valley that they were going to battle belonged to God. It belonged to praise. It belonged to Judah. Let this get in your spirit this morning. He said this right here. Look in, in verse 3. The verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they pitched by the valley of Eli, and set the battle in array against who? The Philistines. If you any kind of if you read your Bible, you know that this story talks about David and Goliath. But I'm going to show you something here just for a moment. They, they were in a valley, verse 3 says, and the Philistines stood on one mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the other side of the mountain, and there was a what? Valley between them. Scott, who did the valley belong to? Judah. So now you've got the enemy on one side, you've got the children of Israel on the other side, and you've got a valley in the middle which separated evil from good. Now hang with me just for a moment. And all of a sudden, listen to me, all of a sudden, here in verse 3, it says that they stood on one side and the other was on the other side. The valley belonged to Judah. But listen to me very, very closely this morning. Goliath, a man, a giant. If you read on down in the scripture, I'm going to paraphrase it because I, I want to give you this word, okay? Judah belonged to praise. This valley belonged to Judah. A man named Goliath stood up. This giant was nine, over nine feet tall. Now think about this just for a moment. This man was over nine feet tall. His helmet was made of brass. His, his coat that he wore, Scott, weighed over 75 pounds. His coat. Big is a giant of a man, Jimmy. Big boy. I'm talking about corn beans and you know, all that stuff. You know, bread, cornbread and pinto bean boy, you know? Big boy. And watch this. He said also his shield that he carried, it weighed so much that two men had to pack it. Two men had to pack this shield. So he was a, a giant of a man. In a first... First Samuel chapter 17, verse 11, let me tell you this. It says, all Israel, 
not some, but all of Israel heard, watch this, heard the words of Goliath, this giant, and they were dismayed and greatly, a what? Afraid. They heard this giant, he was in the valley, and they were afraid of the giant's voice. Now watch this, verse 16 of First Samuel 17 says, Goliath threatened them, he's day and night, y'all watch me, day and night for 40 days. For 40 days, this giant, every morning, of course, he got up, he, his boy said, they packed a big old heavy shield over to him and said, here you go, Goliath, it's on. He would dress every morning, walk down to the valley, and start screaming and start shouting fear into Israel. At nighttime, when they were getting ready to lay their precious heads on their pillow, this old giant would go back up there. He'd put his shield up toward him. He'd put his coat on, his helmet on. His spear was 14 foot long. Grabbed that old 14 foot long spear, and for nobody, he would go back down into the valley, and he would start going, Hey, tomorrow I'm going to kill you. You're a nobody. God don't love you. Where's your God at? This so giant Goliath, over nine feet tall, would stand up and threaten Israel. Now, I want to tell you what the Lord spoke into my spirit this week. A good, rich, deep word. A lot of you are waking up early in the morning, and you're hearing the voice of Goliath. A lot of you at nighttime, before you lay your precious head on your pillow, you're hearing a fearful, threatening, big old voice that says, Hey, you're a nobody. You'll never make it. Who do you think you are? Where's your God? Why is your chest hurting? What about your anxiety? What about your fear? What about your worry? You're listening to the same old giant that Israel listened to for 40 days. Think about this, youth. For 40 days. Every morning, every night, when they woke up, there was a voice in their head. When they laid their head on their pillow at nighttime, there was a voice in their head. And God spoke into my spirit. He said, a lot of people today are waking up with that same old spirit in their head. And a lot of people are laying down before they take their, their last, last goodbye to throw out the night and say their prayers. They're hearing the same old enemy's voice. And now that old voice has turned into nightmares. Now you're getting up at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. I know I'm preaching now. And you're getting up early in the morning. You can't sleep. You're restless. You're tossing. And you're turning because of the enemy's voice. Do you realize, according to the Hebrew language, Goliath means confusion. Write that down. Goliath means confusion. A lot of you are waking up and you're hearing a voice that's saying, you're nobody, you can't do it. Forgiven, you're too young to, to lead praise and worship. Sit back down and get 30 and when you're mature, then you can start worshiping God. Oh, you can't teach a Sunday school class. Who do you think you are? I know what you did last night. And that old voice now has turned into a nightmare. That old voice now, you're listening more to the enemy than you are to the voice of God. Now you're losing sleep, and now you're going to see doctors, and now you're going to see psychiatrists. And I'm listening to me, that may be all right for a season, but I'm telling you, you've got to hear this word today, because this word will set you free in this house today, and I'm excited to preach it. God told me, you've got to tell these people truth. And see, that's exactly what Satan is doing to some of you right now. Right now, you're sitting here, and you're more concerned about how this afternoon's going to work out or how your children are going to turn out or how you're going to pay your bills and how you're going to get through this month and your health is an issue, your marriage is an issue and you're listening to the voice of confusion. You're listening to the wrong voice, church. You're listening to confusion. Goliath knew if he kept screaming, watch me, if he kept screaming, got it for 40 days, they say it takes 30 days to form a habit. 30 days to form a habit. And God spoke into my spirit in Matthew chapter 3. You remember when Jesus was in the wilderness for how long? 40 days. I just wonder about that 41st day. How did God, how did Jesus get out of the wilderness? How did he stop listening to the voice of confusion? The word's good because the word will answer your questions. See, he fasted and he prayed. He got in the presence of God. 
And what people want to do, they want to go to God. They want to pull the God card at the last card. But I'm telling you, if the church of Jesus Christ would just try Jesus first, go to the Lord first, get on your knees and get in the Holy Ghost presence of God and start praying and seeking the face of God, I'm telling you, the voice of the enemy will flee at the name of Jesus. He's the great I am. He is El Shaddai. He's Elion. He's everything you need, and you've got to call out to him first. First, don't call Brother Brian. Don't call psychiatrists. Don't call people. Call on Jesus. He'll set you free, church. I love this. The Bible says that little David, I love little David, five foot two, little David, the Bible says he ran to the battle. Most Christians are experts about running from the battle. We serve a God that will run to the battle, to the problem. See, God don't run away from the addiction that you got. God says, I want to help you where you're at and set you free right where you're at. People say, well, Brian, I'm too bad to come to the Lord. No, 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 no. That's why God died for me and for you and the unrighteous and the drug dealers. and the pro I know y'all may not like preaching like this on a Sunday morning, but when God died, he died for the red and the yellow and the black, and he died for us all. But we got to turn to the Lord one more time. Y'all give God a praise in this house. We got to get back to the Lord. We got to quit running to the voice of the enemy. And give God his attention. That's what we got to do, church. That's what we got to do. Now, we got some guests in here today that are looking like, what in the world is happening? Let me go ahead and tell you, we do not apologize for the Holy Ghost showing up. We do not have no apologies for what the Lord is going to do today. We believe if flesh dies, the Spirit will rise and come Holy Ghost because we need an outbreak of the Lord once again. We need Jesus again. We need some King Davids to rise up. And I love what David, he said he ran. He ran to the problem. He didn't back down. He didn't cower down. He ran. And I love what he said. He showed up, Daniel. I love David. He said, who's cussing? I love this. Who in the world is cussing? Who is cussing my Jesus? See, the problem with the churches today, we got too many, excuse me, it's not going to be very politically correct. We got too many sissy Christians. Oh, he hurt my feelings. Well, stand up and say, you know what, Goliath? Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. I've, I've heard your voice for too long. You come at me with a spear in your hand, but I come with you with the word of God in my mouth. I ain't going to back down. My God is good, and we got to stand up and fight for Jesus in this last hour. How many Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled men and women of God will say, I'm going to rise up and I'm going to fight for my Jesus in this last hour? Come on. We ain't going to back down at this church. We're going to fight for the Lord again. I love David. I love David. He said, who's down there running their mouth? Who is down there cursing my God? Here's what the Lord just spoke to me. See, Goliath messed up because Goliath was trespassing. He was trespassing because Judah, that valley was already bought by Judah. That valley already, Howard, belonged to the Lord. And when the enemy, what the Lord keeps speaking unto me, Kenny, is when the enemy comes at me, he is trespassing on my body. I am blood bought. I feel the Lord. I belong to Jesus and praise. Oh, you think I'm loud now? You let the rapture take place. And I'm telling you, I'm doing the horn sounds. The horn's going up. Because here's the deal. I'm telling you, David, he stood up and he said, no. -uh. See, here's what, here's what really got me also about this, Bobby. David was the smallest of his brothers. Everybody else got anointed. Everybody else was nice looking and big and had a big stature about him. And he said, do you have any more sons? He said, yeah, I got an old boy that plays a harp. I got a little boy out in the field. He's nothing but a little shepherd boy. He's only five foot two. He's ruddy. He, he don't look good. His stature, his clothes bag, they sag on him. Now, it wasn't like today. Some boys need to pull their pants up. 
I don't know where that come from, but if you're a boy in here, nobody don't want to see your rear end. Pull your pants up. Pull your pants up. Pull your pants up. Amen. Turn your neighbor and say, pull your pants up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You say, where have I got myself? Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Even if you're a plumber, pull your pants up. Amen. We got too many pants on the ground. Hallelujah. That's free. What I'm trying to tell you today is that he brought little David in the house and he anointed him. He set him aside for just this cause. I love David because David said a lion came at me and I slew him. A bear came at me and I slew him. Don't you dare let people look at your life because you may be small in stature. Don't you dare let people look at your life and say they're a nobody because they don't have no education. Don't you dare let people look at your life and say I'm nobody because I'm telling you with God I'm a somebody. God will do more for me than what anybody in this world can ever do. I feel the Lord. And I love David. He went down in the valley. And I love this. I love this. One of my favorite stories in the Bible. He went down there and there was old Goliath with his brass helmet and his shield and his coat on. It weighed 75 pounds and all of a sudden, I love this. David said, tomorrow, I'm going to get your head. Now watch me. Tomorrow, big boy, I'm going to get your head. Little David, five foot two, telling a giant over nine foot tall. Tomorrow, big boy, you better bring your mama and your daddy and your granny too. Because tomorrow, I'm going to get your head. And I love this. I love this story. All of a sudden, David shows up. He's got five smooth stones. And here come Goliath marching out there. Oh, feed your body to the carcass. And this, that, and the other. Little David's like, he was the first Clint Eastwood. He was, man. He sat there and he said, come on. And I, I just thought about that. Man, he had a 14-foot spear. He could just go like that right there and jab him. But little David, man, five foot two David, he grabbed a stone, he put it in a sling, and he went around and around and around and pop. Pop that head right there between his eyes. And that old John was like, I feel dizzy, you know. And he fell down. And I love it. It's going to mess Baptists up. This is going to mess y'all up this morning. Hang with me. It's rated R. It's, the Bible's not PG. It's not rated G. It's a bloody scene. It's a bloody battle. A lot of theologians, Jimmy, will tell you he had five stones, which he did. But a lot of theologians will tell you the reason why he had four extra stones was in case he missed Goliath. Do you know that's a lie? It's a lie. Goliath had four, four brothers, four more brothers. In the book of First Chronicles, you can read this, his genealogy. So I can just see little David now, five foot two. He said, I'm going to whip you. And he said, if your four brothers want something, tell them to meet me in the valley tomorrow also. He, didn't, he wasn't going to miss because he's a God that's on time. So he said, I can just see that little David, five foot two. He wasn't cocky. He just believed what he, what he, what he heard. That's where you and I are at today. We've got that same Jesus in us that David had in him. And all of a sudden, that rock went upside his head, and I could see David's four other brothers. Dang. Life, you all right, boy? Ten count, gone. And next part, what really got him. David walked over to Goliath. Read your Bible. He took his foot. He put it on his neck. And he looked down at him. But boy, he was intentional. He wasn't no sissy Christian. He put his foot on his neck, grabbed his hair, took a knife out. Y'all little kids, cover your ears. He went down and he cut his head off. Cut the giant's head off. Read it. First, first Samuel 17, verse 52 through 54. Read it. He cut that giant's head off. And just going to mess y'all up right here. He took the head of the giant 
and put it in a bag, put it over his shoulder, and started walking to Jerusalem. Started walking to Jerusalem. And I was sitting there going, oh, my God. Why did he take the head, cut it off, put it in a bag, and I can just see David, I can just see that little five-foot-two boy walking down the road. He had the head of the giant in a bag. And I'm just sitting there going, my goodness. I, he said, I told you so. Don't you mess with me. I done told you. I'm going to whip you. And see, here's what God told me in the first service. I, I'm going to tell you guys. A lot of you, you've been carrying, the, your problem has been carrying you for a long time. You wake up with a problem, you go to bed with a problem. It's on you, you can't get rid of it. And what God told me, he said, it's time that the church starts packing the problem and quit letting the problem pack them. We as God's people have the army of God. We are the church of the redeemed. We are born again. We are saved. We are blood bought. We got God on our side. And whatever God says comes against you, you can cut its head off. Now watch me. Yeah, y'all go ahead and praise God. I believe somebody's being set free right now. I believe somebody in this house right now has got a word from the Lord that God is setting them free right now. I'm not going to let a problem keep me awake any longer. I feel that in my spirit. When I go to bed, I'm going to count little angels jumping over a fence. Hallelujah. That's what God spoke into my heart. And I'm through after this. But what he spoke into my heart was, David went to Jerusalem. He had the head of the giant in a bag. And I had to start studying, because your Bible don't tell you what part of Jerusalem he took it to. So I got out some Jewish historian commentaries and I started studying this. Listen to me, very important. You get this. You've got to go back and study the Greek and the Hebrew. The, those commentaries said that David walked to Jerusalem. He, he dug a hole and he put the head of the giant in a hole. And I was like, what? And it said that he took the head of the giant, dug a hole at the hill of Golgotha. At the hill of Calvary. How many of y'all know 2,000 years ago, my God, 2,000 years ago, there was a man named Jesus Christ that went to the hill called Golgotha. He went down the old road packing a cross. They took him to the top of the hill of Golgotha, and they put a spear in his side and thorns on his head, and blood ran down his cheeks, down his body. And the Bible, the Jewish historians say the blood covered the head of the giant. So what God told me to tell you this morning, there's no giant in hell. There's no spirit of confusion. There's no weapon formed against you that the blood has not already covered. When Jesus died on that cross, that blood ran down that hill, covered the head, and what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What's going to take me all the way to heaven? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Too many of you in this room have been doing this right here, what I have done for so long in my life. I had a giant in my life named Goliath. Because it's a spiritual battle. It is not a fleshly battle. Listen to me. This will help you more than anything in this world. When you realize your battle's not against flesh and blood. When you realize that your, bi your, your, your body, your spirit, it is a spiritual battle. I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I wrestle against the higher powers and the principalities of darkness. Let me go ahead and break this lie. If anybody ever tells you just to say your ABCs, admit, believe, and confess, and you'll never have no problems, run! Get away from them! Because I'm telling you, when I got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, that's when my battles, that's when the devil, that's when the enemy started coming at me. But I'm here today to tell you a true word. Oh, hallelujah. And whatever you fill your valley with determines how far you'll go. Write that down. Whatever you fill your valley with determines how far you'll go. If you fill that, va that, that valley up with gossip, complaining, I deserve better. Y'all, we don't want what we deserve. 
You don't want what you deserve in this room today. I feel the Lord. I'm telling you, we all deserve to die and go to hell. But on that cross, hallelujah, he died. He died for us all. And if you've been born again, he's coming back for you. Amen? I'm so thankful I got a God who died for me. And the Lord told me in my spirit, praise team, you guys come. Told me in my spirit, listen to me. Here's, here's what a lot of us do. Y'all ready? Take this word. Take this caution. Take heed to this word and do something about it. So many people have a problem. Watch this. I'm not saying we don't have problems. Watch this. I've got issues in my life. I'm not saying that. I've got problems in my life. But I have finally made up my mind I'm not going to let the giant in the valley dictate my praise. My problem was I knew there was a giant and I'd walk around it. Watch me. It'll help set you free. Everybody in here has got something. They're dealing with something. But the problem, Mitchell, they're not going up to that giant and putting their foot on his neck and saying, you listen to me. I belong to God. My praise belongs to Jesus Christ. This valley does not belong to you. I have been blood bought, and if you keep messing with me, I will cut your head off. Now, I know this messes you up. You've got to quit going around your problems. Listen to my spirit. Listen to my heart. You've got to quit going around your issues. I'll go ahead and just tell you I am a stinking mess. I'll go ahead and tell you, man, sometimes my attitude stinks. Sometimes my temperament, it rises up, and flesh tries to rise up in me. But listen to me. There's got to come a point in your life that you say, flesh, shut up. Sit down, because this is God's battle. You've got to quit going around your problems. And you've got to be a man or a woman. And put your foot on the enemy's neck. Notice he's under your feet. Notice your problem is only as big as you make it. God, that's a good word right there. Your problem is only as big as you make it. I believe what God is looking for in this last time. I feel something so special happening in this church right now. God, right now, I see some giant killers in here right now. I see some people that's rising up and saying, I'm not going to be like that no more. I'm not going to worry about that no more. This is not my battle. Satan, you are trespassing on God's property. How many of y'all receive that today? This is God's property. I belong to God. And when Satan comes at me, hallelujah, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. When Satan comes at me, God said, I'll raise a standard up, Brian, that the enemy can't even see where you're at. He'll be delusional. He can't find you. He don't know where you're at. And I'm telling you what you need to do today, man of God. Woman of God, church member, yes, here's what you need to do. You need to rise up today and come to this altar and put your foot down. You might take the Holy Ghost sword of God and lift that enemy's head up and say, Today, I'm not listening to you no more. And I'm cutting, I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it off. Watch me. It's not over. Some of your marriages. It's time that you raise up, my God, and put your foot on the enemy's throne and say, no, you're not getting my children. You're not getting my marriage. You're not getting my church. I'll, hey, I'll ch- cut your head off. Take that old head, put it in a bag, and let's walk to Calvary. How about let's take a little trip this morning? How about let's take a trip to Calvary this morning? How about let's take a trip to the foot of the cross this morning. How about you take your problem, your issues, your head of that old giant and lay it at the feet of Jesus and watch the blood. Do what the blood should do. You don't realize who you serve this morning. We don't realize how blessed we are to be in this house this morning. We've got everything to praise God about. Oh, there may be a valley. 
but it belongs to God. There may be a problem, but it belongs to God. Hey, I'm not going to let my problem, my issue, out stop my Judah praise. It's up to you guys. It's up to you now. So many of you, listen to me. Take that step of faith. Don't sit there and let the devil keep lying to you. If you need a healing, come get it. Whatever. Wherever you're at, you've been listening to the devil, the enemy, for too long. Amen. Go find Jesus, gal. That's a beautiful picture. Go. That's what it's about right there. Go. Elkhorn, don't you dare let that problem kill you. Here's what the Lord just spoke to me. Y'all ready? God's good. Whatever you do in the valley will dictate if the giant gets your head or you get the giant's head. Oh, that's good. Whatever you do in the valley is going to determine if the giant gets my head or I get the giant's head. So I declare today, in this house of worship right now, there's no valley too deep that God can't reach. There's no problem that you've got in your life that God can't reach. I'm telling you today, when Jesus died on that cross, it went over the giant's head, it covered the problem, and you and I should live in victory here today. So church, if you would, stand to your feet. Come on. Come on, let this word...